Tig, Eric, uh, in the car the other day, we were talking about, and I wanted to expound upon it, we were talking about um, classic video games that we experienced back in the day, games that would be considered retro games today. Retro. That, um, that kind of pointed us or made us think about the future potential of what video games might eventually be, and games that made us excited about the possibilities of what the future might be might bring um and so i'm kind of curious to explore that topic a little bit because that instantly brought a few to mind where where i I remember back in the day playing these games and thinking like oh my god like one day this could be this yeah yeah i remember thinking that's what we were talking about in the car is remembering as a kid playing game certain games and going wow in the future I'm going to get to Rome. I'll be probably be able to roam free. In the year 2000. Like, you know, I'll be able to just, they'll be able to just roam freely. On le- like, that blew my mind to think that in the future you'd be able to just not be able, not be stuck, pinned in the situation. Like, you could go wherever you want to go. Which actually just popped one of the, the very, one of the very first games that I remember having that thought. What was it? It was Arena. Do you remember oh, the sure. game Arena? See, that's a little later than what I'm going to talk about. I mean, I'm going to talk about yeah. earlier ones, but that that game, when I played that game, there was like a taste of like, oh, I could break into random houses oh, yeah. that don't have anything to do with the game. And I remember being like, holy shit, like in the future, this will, you know, as games advance, this is going to be, stan- like, this will be great. Like, you can just do what you want. That was mind blowing. That it was, it Arena was, allowed that. It was in a lot of ways way ahead of its time. And for 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 people who don't know what Tig is referencing there, Arena is the first Elder Scrolls game. Uh, it was Elder Elder Scrolls or Arena was the very first one. This is um, pre Skyrim, pre pre Oblivion, pre Morrowind, pre Daggerfall. It's the it's the first one, and it was big, expansive open world where yeah you you could wander the whole wander the whole all of tamriel yeah and you could break I, that's what I'm saying, but you could break into like you could walk down a, a town street and break into houses and steal shit if you wanted to mm-hmm. and just that it seems so simple now but at the time it was like wait what i could like because prior to that you can never go into some random house that was just a random house on the street it wasn't part of the game you just walk by it but this was like, yeah, you can break in if you want. You could get arrested. They can come after you. It just seems like such a big, a big step forward to. Yeah, it was. It was definitely a a um, sort of a proof of concept for what games would later become and and later be. Um, but you you tell what was one of the uh, going back further into the. Yeah, there were there were there were some ones even earlier than that that kind of. Blew my mind in a similar way, and for similar reasons, actually, for very similar reasons. There are two in particular that I remember. There's a, there's a couple on the Commodore 64 as well that are kind of in this category. But the two big ones, two two of the big ones that, well, I'll start with one of the big ones. It really just completely absorbed me. And this wasn't on the Commodore 64 or the VIC-20, which is where I started my computer playing days. Um, but it was a it was a computer game that got ported to the Sega Genesis. And that's where I discovered it was on the Sega Genesis. Though I knew this game series from seeing the boxes. Don't you don't you dare. This better not be what I think it is. No. Take my goddamn. I'm not gonna. <laughs> it, 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 I remember seeing the box art for the computer versions in um, Toys R Us of all places. Because Toys R Us oh, used yeah. to have a section for PC games and stuff. But but I, I had found it for Genesis. Oh. And that was Might and Magic. Oh, yeah. Gates to Another World. Um. This is technically Might and Magic 2, but for the, the port over to the Genesis, they, they, you know, it was just Might and Magic Gates to Another World with this absurdly, oh, absurdly thick instruction Holy booklet. Christ, I never knew it was that thick. Jeez, that's like a Reader's Digest of its time. Gigantic, <laughs> gigantic um, instruction book inside with, like, Maps of, of dungeons and huge lists of spells and abilities and Holy all the things Christ. that you can do and maps of all the realm. And I remember this game blowing my mind for very similar reasons. It was basically, you know, you created a party of characters. It was sort of very classic RPG, you know, Dungeons and Dragons inspired RPG. You create a party of characters of all different races and classes. And then you just had this, then the game is just like, 
here's a big ass world. Go figure out what to do. That's crazy. There, there isn't even a, there, there is kind of a main quest or story to follow, but you kind of have to find it and figure it out as you're going along. Otherwise it's, it's just this big vast world with this huge amount of, I, of, of things that you can do. I remember wandering around and you discover these fairgrounds where you can play fair games and win things. Oh, that's um, cool. So completely separate. Yeah. There's just all this, you know, yeah, you, 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 you find these, these dungeons so you can do dungeon crawls. Um, they're boss monsters that are like out in the middle of the desert or out in the mi- middle of the, the, the wilderness that you, that you can encounter. There's all these, cause it doesn't keep a quest log so that there's all these sort of little stories and things that are kind of just hidden in the world and you just have to discover them. Even exploring the world was, and this is the sort of thing I wish they would bring back in games like this. Remember, there were there were areas that you couldn't go to because you didn't have the right equipment yet. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. So, like, in order to climb mountains or traverse the forest without getting lost or whatever you need, it's a, you had to buy food so that you had food enough to yeah. make these journeys. And the world was huge and deadly. You could go to places that were way over your level. And right, you, can get, you weren't, you don't belong. Yeah, you can get absolutely just stomped. And I just, just... Uh, remember obsessively playing this for ages hand drawing maps to like you know all these notes i think i might even still have a notebook upstairs of like (laughs) all that stuff and just just remember thinking like wow they can just create worlds like whole worlds to and i don't you're not on on rails you don't just have to follow whatever the story is you can do whatever it was very much a precursor to the things that elder scrolls in particular but you know the witcher and elden ring and, and some others now do it's is this idea of just yeah you just get to roam yeah 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 it was mind blowing just blew my mind i wonder if that was one of the first because that's on that was on the sega master system or genesis this was on the sega genesis but the yeah the uh the, the might magic series debuted in the 80s okay so that was originally a pc game yeah because i never got to play it but they're 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 all literally all of them except for maybe um the ninth one in the series are all really good. The, the 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 first one is a little bit dated, so it's hard to get into. The second one is still very good, though I actually prefer the Genesis version over the PC version. Not only just due to nostalgia, but like the Genesis version has a soundtrack, whereas the PC doesn't. There's some quality oh, of life really? issues that get added or that get um, enhanced on the Genesis version. But then three, which is uh, the Isles of Terra, which is also on the Nintendo. I don't remember if it's the NES or the the SNES. Uh, but Might Magic Three, The Isles of Terra. I played. I played that one recently. Again, still excellent. Then Might and Magic Four and Five. This was crazy. Four and Five, both again, same sort of concept. Big open world, lots of things to do. Wander around, you know, find all these different like systems to interact with and things that you can do and all that. But the two games on PC, you could then combine them hmm. so that you can traverse between literally. Within one game, you could go between oh, Jesus, the two maps. How did maps. they even do that? Um, it it became uh, Worlds of Zine, so that's what it was called. Like like Might Magic Four and Might Magic Five. If you had them both, you can combine them, and it became a single game called Might Magic Worlds of Zine, <laughs> which was really cool. And then though, and then then after that, and yeah, then after that, they went. Oh, I, I don't have my glasses. Oh Jesus! Um, I'll never know now. <laughs> And then, and then after that, Might Magic Six, which is what this is covered from, which is where they went to more full three D. Looks very D and D there. This that Might Magic Six was 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 great. Um, I remember getting that on PC when I started to get more heavily into PC gaming. And again, it was it was all these things that were there were sort of precursors to the Elder Scroll thing, um, but with a whole party of characters, which was great. I still like having a party yeah. of characters as opposed to one. And yeah, it was it was in, in, incredible, and and they really to me made me think again of, of the future of like wow imagine when when this is looked it's going to look realistic yeah, it's and gonna look know, real yeah all that kind of stuff <laughs> it was mind blowing mind blowing it blew my mind yes now, you had another one though it was one of your nostalgic yeah, and I get it. not necessarily open world no it wasn't open world but it was like there's there's the thing is there's so many that like before we get to that one if you think about it there was like Zelda Right. Yeah. Which was very, that was the first, my first taste. That was probably my first taste of like, oh, I could just spend weeks roaming around this open place and I don't even have to do the things I want that that are part of the main story. Yeah. The Legend of Zelda was very forward looking in that way because you could just wander the Mm -hmm. map 
and you had to work your ass off to find secret places and, and hidden things and stuff like that. I don't know how the hell people were finishing that game back in the day without guides, like without Nintendo Power Magazine to help them. Yeah, I, I beat that game, but I definitely did not, if I remember. There's no way that I found certain levels on my own. Because it wasn't... wasn't certain like, levels were hidden, so it was real hard. Like, some of them were, like, up rock wall. You know, you had to go up, find secret stairs going up rocks. That, you know, isn't there one of me where you had to bomb a specific rock wall yeah. in, a, in, like, this out-of-the-way location? Yeah, there were... And, and, you know, it's this very specific place that you have to 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 go to do that. Yeah, and there's one, I think, behind a tombstone, if I remember correctly, and it had to be specific to it, but it was on one of those boards where it kept, like, oh, if you didn't move the right way, if you didn't go up. There was a lot of boards where it was, like, if you didn't go up, right, left, up. Oh, it was, up, like, okay. In, the, in like, the, the graveyard, you would never get to the spot you needed to get, and how are you figuring So if I, I beat Zelda, but I, I, don't, I don't know anybody that beat it without help. Yeah. Because how are you figuring that out unless you spend so much time? I mean, I know at the time where, I, like, when I used to play Fantasy Store mm-hmm. on the the Sega Master System, um, sitting down with graph paper hey. and mapping out those dungeons because the dungeons Fantasy Star had three D dungeons from a first person perspective, which was pretty crazy. Yeah, for, it's pretty for, nuts. For back in the day, the only time that you saw that was on the PC, where you would see it in like the Wizardry series and stuff like that. Um, and they were even that, that that was very basic, but, but, but they were because graphics back in the day couldn't do too much. Every corridor looked the same, right? Every door looked the same. Um, and it didn't keep a map for you. So it was really easy to get lost in these really big multi-level dungeons. So I would sit down with graph paper and painstakingly map out like, yeah, I mean, you had you're to. advancing like one square at a, at a time and just, <sighs> Oh my God. At some point. At some point, you're gonna move that, maybe, um, and map out all these 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 dungeons. And at the time, I loved doing it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I would now. <laughs> well, because you're like discovering. You're sort of there's there is something joy about just drawing the maps out and sort yeah. of like putting down writing things in them. And yeah, there. I I do agree though. If I had to do it now, there's no way I was pl- I'm playing any game now where I have to write down. But we've gotten spoiled. Yeah, that's true. So it's not a. I, I have been I have been um, on and off recently replaying the original Bard's Tale trilogy. Oh, okay. And I don't think the originals had mapping, but the um, but the new versions that are out under the Bard's Tale trilogy does. It adds the auto mapping, and it's like thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, what are the one of the games back then that I do remember did have the mapping, and this was one of the other ones that was um very mind blowing. Was the they called the Gold Box series? It started with the pool, uh, uh, pools of radiance, with the pool of, of radiance. radiance. Not the same one that you're thinking of. Oh, okay. Because a, another later game came out under the same name, also Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, but, I remember I had that one. Though. Yeah, not the same game. Back on the the Commodore 64 and uh, the the, the C128, the original had come out, and still to this day, it is one of the most highly detailed and accurate recreations of Dungeons and Dragons. Ever. Really? Ever. Um, really, really like on point with all the rules and stuff like that. And the the bat it's hard to play now because the battles take forever. Yeah. You're on this big grid and it incorporates all the rules from 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 the time. Um yeah, there's they're really lengthy battles. So when you get into a fight with like thirty kobolds oh, gee, oh, and you have to sit there as all thirty kobolds make their moves. Ugh. Um but in those games too, you had a big world that you can sort of freely explore. Relatively large cities that you were exploring in first person, um, and but though they at least provided maps for you. At least I, I, I believe they did. I might be. I hope I'm not uh, misremembering that with playing. You'll know, because because you'll cause, be told. Because people have have since modded the games to add some quality of life improvements, and that might be because the most recent time I, I started to replay some of them a few years back, and I might have been playing them with those mods, so I might be misremembering. Than yeah, having if you, oh yeah, you don't mapping. remember. Yeah. Um I was gonna bring those discs down because I had I um some years back in the C D ROM days, they come out with the Forgotten Realms collection or the Forgotten Realms archive. Okay. That had a bunch of those games all gathered together. And so of course I had to go grab because like, Oh my god, I have to play these <laughs> you know, it was uh, the Pool of Radiance and Curse of the Azure Bonds and was it Pool of Darkness? There was um 
uh, the Savage Frontier series. There was a whole bunch of them. The Gold Box series is huge and expansive, very well regarded these days. But it's hard if you didn't play them at the time. It's hard to go back to them, yeah, because they're just they're 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 very, age shows. That would be the same with King's Quest, which would be the other game that you knew I was going to bring up. Yes, where I did. Same thing where not not so much open world, but it is a, that is an open world game because you could just roam around forever looking at things and trying to discover things. Yeah. But when I played King's Quest, I don't know if it really I, I feel like I feel like games like Metroid were kind of more made me feel like that than King's Quest because King's Quest three game, especially King's Quest three. Even when you were searching around doing nothing. You weren't really doing nothing. You were constantly looking for stuff. Yes, because you needed the items to figure yeah, out. Yeah, so you were always. Yeah. Even mm-hmm. though you were, ro- there wasn't like that free roaming like these other games you talk about. But Metroid, I felt like that all the time. Yeah. I felt like Metroid, you had a mission or whatever, but there were times when you were just looking for ways to like get in other rooms or go into other rooms yeah. that you didn't belong and. All that kind of shit going on. You didn't. I guess you didn't get to play Metroid though because of the. I, I did. I did play some of it back on. then. Yeah, and 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 I I played a similar game series on the Master System, the Sega Master System, called Zillion. Okay. And um, of course, the term Metroidvania didn't exist back then, but Zillion was similar to Metroid in that in that way where you kind of had free roam of the facility, but then there were areas that you couldn't get yeah. to or go to because you didn't have. Either the ability yet, or the the item, or whatever it was, right. the key card. Yeah, like or you jump high enough at that time, or yeah. something like that. So you would wander around and like you know figure things out and 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 interact with traps and and enemies and stuff like that until you got the ability or item or whatever it was to then open up the new area. You know, in classic Metroid style as well. I I, I do love that that whole genre of games too. That you know what now they call Metroidvanias. Metroidvania. Uh, the the funny thing is when we were in the car talking about it, it, we were bringing up the fact that we both looked forward to those games, mm-hmm. like being able to roam freely. And we were talking about how like it's funny that there are people that probably never thought that way because they don't they never really enjoyed that like aspect of games, which would be in the minority probably because the, the games where you can do that are like hugely. Po- I mean, they're yeah. the most popular games. Yeah, the open world stuff is gigantic. Yeah, there. um, and uh, there are. There are valid complaints about some of the some of the approach to open world design, mostly for like Ubisoft games and stuff like that, where like you know we're basically here's a big map and we're just gonna put icons all over where you're just doing the same shit everywhere. right right um and I get why people don't like that. I mean that's stuff that can get boring and tedious you know? yeah. but um but the games that get those big worlds right i mean i I kind of one of the ones that I know we both agree on that felt kind of like one of these, like a, a culmination moment of the potential of what games could be with Red Dead Redemption oh, 2. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, that was one of these things where it was just like, you kind of had everything. You not only had a great story to follow with great characters and all that, but just this amazingly rich and alive world to just wander around and interact with. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that and Grand Theft Auto. Mm-hmm. Like, holy Christ. Yeah. They were uh, yeah. obviously made by the same people, so it's like a. But yeah, I, I mean, Rockstar and Bethesda in particular, they both, I think, they build incredible worlds. Yeah, like the, in it, different ways, but incredible worlds. It's still, it's still, as an old person, blows my mind playing those games and thinking back to those games we played as a kid and being like, "This is it!" Like this is. These are the games I waited for in the 80s and early 90s. Like these games, Red Dead 2, Grand Theft Auto, uh, Assassin's Creed, all these kind of games are the games that I waited my whole life to play. Mm-hmm. And it's just crazy how like hu- they're actually they're actually bigger than I could have imagined as a kid. Like some of these games are gigantic. Yeah. Like you know what's ridiculous though, they're. They're not always big enough for me. <laughs> well, <laughs> I want I I want them even bigger. Well, they're gonna keep getting bigger. What wasn't yeah. what? What is the biggest? What is the biggest world? Do you think? Because there's games now that are PC, right? There's like uh, it, 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 aren't there games that are like if you spent like the 
It you depends could spend on the day how you, walking. It depends on how you define the size of a world, and it depends on whether or not you want to count procedurally generated worlds. So, like something like a No Man's Sky, for right? Instance. That's what I was thinking. Um, it's like because technically you can't hit an end of a board in that, right? Well, the thing the thing with something like like No Man's Sky, and 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 that's why it's hard to to if you even count it. There are literally billions of planets, literally right. billions of planets, and the planets are huge. They're like, I don't think they're actually planet size, but they're big enough so that if you wanted to walk from one side to another, it would take it would you take, real yeah, world days. It, right. They make, right. They're enormous. So I guess you can, in theory, say like, well, that and games like that are the biggest ones because, you know, it would take you thousands of lifetimes to, you know. Yeah, but, you couldn't in your time. Right. But 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 I do think that there's a difference between those procedurally generated like hey here's a billion worlds. Um, I think there's a difference between that and like the sort of handcrafted, like we've built this world intentionally for you, like, right? Like something of the scale of you know, Red Dead or Grand Theft Auto Five, which was pretty large, you know, at, at its time. Um, um, Elder Scrolls Online right now. I specifically say Elder Scrolls Online rather than Skyrim, just because it's. Size-wise, it's much larger. Though it's divided up in in smaller individual maps, it's it's huge. Um, but yeah, but yeah, there there are the definitions get 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 foggy. That that's a that's a, a common topic that people talk about and debate about. And you'll see people who make graphics of like the biggest biggest right, world. There has to be stipulations almost in a way. Yeah, there's there's a there's a, a racing game. Shit, what the hell was it called? Oh, is that the rage. one that you, told, you it, told me about that, where you can drive across, like, I think, didn't you play a game? Is that the game you're talking about, where you, like, not, I think you told me you could drive, you were driving across, like, the country or something? Not, and, uh, not that one, that's the crew, too. Oh, okay. Um, Which is huge, and I, have, I, I, I actually kind of have a great time with that game. I still fire up every now and again. Not because of the actual racing in it, because there's all sorts of races throughout it. Right. And you could do off-road racing. And street racing, and you could fly planes and do like stunt racing. Yeah, you drive boats and boat racing and all that kind of sort of stuff. But what I like to do in that game is to pick two points in the country because it's the entire this map is, of the United States. This is what I remember. Um, and just put it in like like driving mode, and see if I can just navigate from like <laughs> like I'll be like, can I drive from Miami to uh, Seattle just following the road signs right, yeah, and no GPS style? Yeah, yeah, without looking at maps, like no maps and stuff stuff. Which, as you know, I like to do that from like yes. Red Dead and stuff. <laughs> and um, and I think one night I I I did that, and I don't know, it was maybe like a two hour drive or something like that, where I'm just sort of cruising, you know, like <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I, th- I think I got it. Uh, oh, I'm I'm in um St. Louis now. I got so to hang a hang a left or yeah. right, yeah, yeah, like actually like following the signs and stuff like that. What you know, and purposely never looking at a map, That's funny, and not using GPS or mini map or anything like that. No, it's a different one though. Um, I think I don't I don't remember if it's Rust or Dust. It's not Rage. I think it's Rust. I think the game is Rust, and it's a racing. game. I think it's a post-apocalyptic racing game, but it's apparently, and I, this is not not one that I played. I only know it by reputation. Right, right. But apparently, it has this absurdly large world where even driving at top speed it takes like hours to get across huh. the whole thing which to me sounds awesome however if there's nothing on the map and i don't think there's really anything yeah, on the yeah, map yeah, then, then it's, it's yeah that's the thing when you think about it and we the topic basically about like these giant games and what we looked forward to playing as kids when we got older it was like there at some point any game that's going to be that big, like infinitely big, where you never hit an end, is going to have to be regenerate, like the the kind, like you're saying, no man's sky. Yeah. yeah, because I mean, at some point, if the game is so big, what are they? You're going to have how many guys, how many people working? Oh on, yeah, you know, this is specifically made for you, and it's the size of it's real size. It's one one scale to well, yeah, and the difficulty of I mean, you know, there is there is a game that is one one scale of the entire planet Earth right now. The current Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, yeah, that's true. And and not only is that one one scale for the entire Earth, but this is really wild. It's constantly pulling in real world weather data. Oh, so so oh, okay. So no matter where you are in the world, flying, you're getting the actual weather for that spot huh. at that time. Um, uh, like I think i think at this point it's like tens of thousands of of airports are actually there in their places they're not all modeled to look exactly right right. but a lot of them are 
um they're, they're constantly adding all these updates and stuff and all the 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 look of all the world is all generated through satellite imagery and stuff like that it's crazy so it looks um until you get up close of course looks very accurate uh, it's really wild that that technology I, that that is another game you know what we could probably do this same video 20 years from now because the technology used to make the current flight simulator um of course they're they're generating the entire world but from the air eventually similar technology they'll be able to do that but you'll be able to experience it from the ground at the ground level and actually be in that world like from the air they can they can fudge the fidelity and stuff sure cuz you don't you know yeah you're not looking at it close up yeah Still incredibly impressive. The technology is wild for that game. I mean, I, I encourage anyone, whether or not you care about flight simulators, because I don't, yeah. um, or or even the game, watch some videos about the technology used to create that game. It is incredible what they're doing. They are pulling in real-time data from all these different sources. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. So event like 20 years from now, they're going to be able to do that. They're going to be doing that with the real world on the ground level. So can you imagine they'll be able to make let's say war games or shooter games or whatever, where you'll, you'll, you'll be on the, you could be on the, the streets of any city and playing through your scenario, but like in real time, almost in a way. Yeah. And, and with the, with the, the city reflecting what it actually looks like, they might, they might have actual real time traffic data or like, forget about war games. Cause we'll keep it more peaceful. Drive, <laughs> driving games. Could you imagine a driving game? Yeah, that would be actually pretty cool if it was a driving game where you're driving through the city and it's like the real time, like at 5 p.m. You yeah. know, um, in Literally, New York City. And, yeah, I know. 9 a.m. I know even right now, um, like a long form and real time driving games are, are very popular. A shout out to Ian, the comic artist, who is going to be a guest relatively soon once we figure out the, 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 the tech. We were talking the other day. You know Ian from the yep. comments a lot. Um, we were talking the other day, he and I were on a, a video chat, shooting the shit, and he relaxes playing, uh, I think he's, I think he plays Euro Truck Driver. Okay. <laughs> Euro Truck, that is uh, it, interesting. For, for anyone unfamiliar with these games, literally, it's, you drive a truck in real time is and do like, like six hour routes. Is it like Farm Simulator? Uh, no, it's, it's, it's even more chill. The Farm Simulator games I actually kind of hate, um, and they're very... No, this, you're just, you're driving a tractor trailer on roads for hours, and that's what it is. But the people who enjoy them, they just, they find them super relaxing, because you're just sort of chilling out, you're behind the wheel, you're doing your thing. Ch changing lanes and shit. Yeah, and you know, um, so imagine racing games where, yeah, you're, you're going to get real-time data on, and real city streets and maps, and like, imagine being able to get in a game and just race through your hometown right yeah yeah yeah. like yeah that would be cool that's gonna be incredible and it will happen it, i guarantee i guarantee you right now there are companies who are behind the scenes working on that technology it's funny this is completely off topic but to think that with those truck driving games that you know in the future when they're self-driving trucks that there's going to be people who get paid to sit at home to like monitor yeah, those truck like the, like guys like Ian will be paid to be like, hey, there's a truck driving, self driving from here to, you know, they'll be like drone Dusseldorf, pilots in the military. Germany, yeah, and you just got to make sure you're like in the cockpit watching video, like yeah. steer, keep an eye on all that shit. That that kind of stuff is really exciting because you know, I I mean, obviously we started this topic talking about the games from back in the day that made us look right, forward right. to what games would be, and so we thought with games like Red Dead Two and 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 so on that. Oh, we've we've we're there. We've, yeah, we've reached, reached it. it, but we really haven't. No. Like, even that is only pointing the way towards what we might eventually get to. And it's going to be, you know, Red Dead Two was very handcrafted. It's going to be you can't put together a hand a handcrafted world of that kind of scale where you're getting on the the size of entire states or countries or even planets. Right. You can't handcraft all that stuff. But as generative technology gets better, um. They're going to be able to just basically say, you know, we want to, we want a game that's about, um, that's about quashing the Texan rebellion. And so they're going to take all the, 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 they're going to take all of Texas and all the, the satellite maps and imagery and all that. And they're going to be able to drop it into a game and just make that map. And then they could just build the game in that map that basically an AI system creates the, the, right. the map. 
Like that stuff is going to be, or like we're going to make an explorer game where you're lo you're looking for lost ruins in Peru. You're looking for lost Incan ruins, and they're going to be able to just sort of pluck a big chunk of the 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 rainforest out and drop it into a system and generate it, and then they can just go in and hand drop in like the the gamey parts right, right on top of it. It's the it's sad that I will not live long enough to <laughs> to enjoy what some of that's going to be. You might be like an old guy playing these games. Maybe. I do, I do, and unless you had one other one, there was, well, there was at least one other I wanted to name drop before we get, before we go. Because, and thankfully there's, the ad is even on the back of the oh. White Magic manual. This is another game um, also brought over to um, the, the Sega Genesis, uh, but it started off as a PC game. I think it, I think it was, um, I think it was brought over to the Genesis by no, you know, uh, yeah, it was brought over to the Genesis by Electronic Arts. I think, maybe I'm wrong. Forget You'll find part. out. But anyway, um, yeah, the best way to get the right answer is to say something wrong <laughs> on the internet. But uh, but this 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 was another game that not only consumed me back in the day, consumed, consumed me, me, but blew my mind with its openness and just kind of um, the fact that it was just, you know, it was Starflight. The game oh, Starflight. So Starflight was wild. The fact that this even existed back in the day. Um, There's like the 80s? Yeah. Obviously, yeah. It was an open galaxy game. You piloted a small ship. You were working for this space agency from this space station. You had some hints that something was going on in the galaxy, but you weren't quite sure. So the beginning of the game was you would fly from solar system to solar system literally going between the different solar systems. You'd reach these solar systems. You'd go in and like scan the solar systems. You know, you, there's all these planets. You'd, you'd fly in, pick what kind of planet you're going to land on just to get into the planet. Like you had to approach planets by the right angle to, um, so the gravity wouldn't sling you oh, out okay. to get in orbit around them. You could land on these planets with your little lander and you had all these scanners and stuff like that. And you, you mine for resources for like um, minerals and stuff like that. The planets, each one of these planets were different. They were big maps. The planets were different. They would have like extreme weather conditions or... It's weird to think of this all going on in the 80s. Yeah. Like, I'm curious what the... So, so your, your, your lander could get screwed up if it got caught in like oh, a... Oh yeah, some storm Like a something. bad storm or a lava flow or something like that. But you would mine all these resources, bring them back, go back to the station. You'd pay to be upgrade, upgrading your ship. And as you upgraded your ship... You would be adding different modules to it uh, or, or your lander to help you better scan planets huh. or better land on planets or to be able to go further because you could only, the way your fuel worked, you know, you could only make so many jumps to get to so many systems, blah, 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 blah. Um, there were also, throughout the galaxy, you can encounter all these alien races. And when you encounter all these alien races, there was a couple of factors at play. One, you didn't always speak their language. Two you actually had to engage in diplomacy and there was this whole conversation oh, system God. where you're talking back and forth with them and like trying to, you know, hey, we're hey, all I'm good. Just or, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all it's this, easy to use the bathroom. Yeah, all this, all this sort of stuff. As you're doing this, you're discovering anomalies out in the, out in the galaxy and there's a story that you can discover that I'm, isn't... I'm, I'm, go I'm Googling because I just want to visualize a picture while you're talking. The, game's, the, the, the game is incredible and I actually replayed it um, just a few years ago, and in fact, there's a fan remake of it. There's Starflight One, Starflight Two, and there's a fan remake. I can't remember what it's called, but in order to add some a little bit of some of like modern quality of life upgrades to it. But as you're going through, there's a story that you can kind of uncover about this um, this this stuff that's happening that's snuffing out stars throughout the galaxy. Oh God! There's, oh, so there's like a backstory kind of. There's thing a whole on. story that's that's going on that you eventually uncover. And have to solve. But the thing about this game is, which was really unusual at the time, it didn't direct you towards the story. It didn't sort of lead you by the by by the nose. You had to discover it and find it on your own. You had to kind of take you almost notes just stumble and, upon it. Yeah, it, it, and it was big and huge, expan and, and hmm. expansive. And there were literally, I can't, oh, I can't read it. Jesus, what does this say? But there were like hundreds of star systems you can visit. Jeez, how did they make the game so big? I mean, back then it, it was they were i mean i know it was very simple obviously yeah the graphics were were, were right, relatively right. but yeah there it was it was huge and super cool and i just i remember playing that at the time and, and just thinking like holy shit 
this is amazing. I can't believe that I can just fly from planet to planet <laughs> yeah, to planet and, do, back and then. do this sort of thing. Like, what is this going to be like years from now? And now I'm hoping in September, um, Star. See, I'm about to say um, uh, Star Flight, but that's the game that we're we're, we're talking oh, about. Oh, the name of the new Star game? Field. Star Field comes out from Bethesda, the makers of the current Fallout games. Which, which we didn't end up talking about Fallout, because I was going to say the original Fallout games were some of the other ones that initially blew my mind, but different for a different different uh, video. <laughs> but, uh, the, you know, the makers of the current Fallout games and the Elder Scrolls series, like Skyrim and all that, they are, in September, their science fiction game comes out. Oh, that's awesome. And in that game, you have a starship, you can fly from planet to planet to planet, there's a thousand planets in the game. Um on the planets, you can freely roam and explore. Yeah, you yeah. can build bases. Plus, there's a whole storyline and there's factions. It's all like the classic Bethesda stuff. So that you can follow quest lines for different factions and all this shit. And I'm just... Um, I know it's it's very fashionable to bash on Bethesda these days. Oh, why? Probably a, a topic for another video. <laughs> um, Fair enough. But it is, it's, it's very fashionable to bash on them these days. But I, for one, am incredibly eager for that game. I, I you know... I mean, I've been wait. waiting for... I mean, No Man's Sky was the one that I was waiting for years since I was a kid to be like, fly around the galaxy. And it kind of pooed the bed, shit the bed early on. When, it was, it. when yeah. it was released. Yeah, I, I, I played it last year a lot. Um, I finally went back to it when people were finally saying, hey... It's not the game that it was when it came out. It's good now. So I finally said, okay, let me give it a shot. And um, and I actually, I ended up putting in like 100 hours into it. Um, it did end up being... Yeah, good. They fixed... It ended up be, being very, very good. There's there, there's sort of a story to follow, and it's eh. And it does get repetitive. I mean, there's a lot of criticisms you can make of it. But if you just want a... I just kind of want to wander around and, and dick around and maybe build some cool looking bases right. and stuff. And, and like fly around and fight some pirates in asteroid fields and stuff like that. No Man's Sky is super fun these days. I found it to be really chill and relaxing and really enjoyable and uh, was worth every penny I paid for it. Every penny? All the pennies. <laughs> I can't think of any other games that... I, I, I know you... Uh, um, let's put a pin on this one. Other than one. King's Quest, but again, that's not really... Yeah, let, let's put a pin on that, that one thing. I'm curious for, for viewers and listeners if you'd like to hear us talk about this. We bring up King's Quest. And I know we both have a fondness for those classic point-and-click adventure oh, God, games. Yeah. So I would love to talk about that maybe one day. And if other people like those point-and-click adventures or would like to hear us talk about that, to like let us know in the comments so that we know whether or not we I should explore to that. I talk about point I mean, I played those. That's all I played throughout the 80s. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I, I was and remain a big fan of them. I mm. still go back to, back to point... Not, not back to them. I still play modern point-and-click right. adventures from time to time. Um, and I know we both had a good experience with the the new king's quest oh god yeah I, yeah i finished that Sur was surprisingly yeah, I, excellent. I just started playing it again like me and my son actually were just playing it again a couple awesome. of months ago because he was like let's play king's quest again so let's mark that on the calendar yeah, and yeah. talk about that for the the future uh for folks out there i would i would be really curious for, about the games that first made you think about the potential for like not they didn't just make you blow your mind at the time made but made you think oh my god 10 years from now or 20 years from now when they when they really make this better this is going to be incredible I, i'm kind of curious about the first game that made like that, that made your head go what's that uh, the john c Riley? Me <laughs> you mean yeah. that yeah that 80s movie that um like i i want to know the ones that made you think that way because i know again for me back in the day my magic and starflight and pulls radiance. Um, um, uh, what's the the the? Oh man, I can't believe I'm blanking out on it. It's um, <laughs> sounds like um, two words. It's Quest for the Avatar. Blah, blah, blah. Ultima Four. Quest for the Avatar. Oh, Ultima Four. Ultima Four was like again very open, yeah, free yeah. form kind of game. These were games that at the time were like, oh my god. Um, so, yeah, it made me excited for the gaming that we eventually got to now, though now that we got into the conversation, now I'm even more excited for what the games might yeah, be when yeah. I'm 70. It never stops! Well, yeah, that's right. I just peaked that right there. You probably did. <laughs> um, I, don't, I, I, I don't know if we're going to record another, if we're going to order food, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm hungry. Yeah, it doesn't matter. These people don't care. Let's no. Leave. Let's leave. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Bye.